Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm back with another motor test. This time we're going to take a look at the Turnigy 2836 1100 kV. This is a motor that I always have fond memories of when I was flying flight test planes. I use this a lot in those planes because I like the power it made, and then they're cheap, they're easy to get. And I have a number of other things to cover, including what happened to the prior ESC, the one that blew up in the last video, the workbench, and a couple of other things. So stick with me, and after the break, we'll get right into it. All right, so after I posted the first video with the SK3 test, one of our subscribers, Druid, said, hey man, that's not safe with all those batteries up there. And you know what, he was right. When you think about it, that was kind of an accident waiting to happen because that's an uncontrollable mess of chemical. And all it would take is for one of these props to let go during testing, hit that pile, slice open a lipo, and I got a serious problem on my hands. So, I took his comment to heart and you know it's kind of been nagging me anyway doing to do something about it to get the bench cleaned up a little bit so I just built myself a little shelf and put them down there now they're off the table they're out of the way the bench top is clear the only thing I've got over here is a, is a battery charging for one of the tests that we're about to run so thanks for calling me out on that to I appreciate it safety first okay so next thing let's talk a little bit about the ESC one of our other subscribers David said that he likes these SUPPO ESCs. He's used them in some of his airplanes, and we shouldn't characterize them all as bad. So he's right about that, and I've even said that on my videos myself. Light world's not perfect, so what? Move on, things break, all right? So I have two thoughts on this ESC. The first thing, I took off the heat shrink, and then I pried off the, the heat sink, and it's clearly blown. I mean, that's the, that's the problem that I see on this ESC. That is definitely blown. That popped. I may try and fix that just to see, just for, just for curiosity, but clearly that's the problem. And with that in mind, this goes directly to David's point, the world's not perfect, things happen. What I'm happy about the most is it happened on a bench and not in an airplane. That's the cool thing. So let me backpedal a little bit on, on saying that SUPPO ESCs are terrible. What I will say is they probably all use the same components and this was just a failure that's all there is to it now one other comment I'm not an electrician but I was looking at that solder work when I was in there and it's pretty terrible so I'd be really curious to see what some other ESCs would look like but maybe that's a topic for another day all right next thing I want to do is show you guys I've mentioned I've had a box I got a box full of motors and, and that's what I was talking about I've got all that stuff to test plus we've got all these airplanes to test too you know we can I really want to get the rim fire off the off the Escapade MX and take a look at that. That's going to happen. <laughs> that's going to happen. Well, let's get on to why we're here, and that's to take a look at that Turnigy motor. I went to the Hobby King website and I looked up their specs. They say maximum current 18 amps, max power 302 watts, and they do give a prop size. So what they're saying here is on a two cell, so it's a two to four cell range. On a two cell, use an 11.7, which seems ridiculous to me. And then I guess that's a four cell. They're saying use a 7.3. So 11.7 at two, 7.3 at four, I think right in the middle, a nine inch prop. That seems to be the right thing to do. And if I remember correctly, that's where I used to start. One other thing I wanna show you, and this is what I love about having a test stand like this, is that I had this idea this is the wire that I normally use for that Turnigy 610, the UP610 charger. But this power supply, I can set it at, at a voltage level, so I can, I can set the, uh, dial the voltage here. I can set the voltage down as low as, yeah, they didn't like that at all. <laughs> so I can, I can lower the voltage, I can raise the voltage up to 14, or I can, just, I can just set it to a fixed number, and that's right down here. So I'm going to flip it over to 13.8. That's a fixed voltage, and we're on that number now. So let me get the uh, charger started back up again. And I'm going to unplug and replug the test stand because it clearly didn't like what it saw earlier. But the, So this is a 50-amp charger, and our max amperage on this is only 18 amps. So the other cool thing is I don't have to charge a battery every single time, and you're probably going to wind up getting more consistent results because there won't be there is no voltage sag on a power supply 
So now the problem with that is that's more of a bench result. That's why I'm still charging the battery because I want to see what happens. I want to see the difference. And man, this is what's so awesome about having a stand like this. Okay, something was not happy there. I wonder why that cut off. There is a cutoff there. Oh, the voltage. The voltage dropped. Yeah, it does not like that. All right, we're going to have to go back to a battery. All right, so two updates. Number one, I went back and, and just ran a test again without the camera and, and checked the thrust. It's 1002. I'll show that in the video as well. All right, I went ahead and plugged in a 1047 slow fly prop. I expect this probably to draw more amps than it should. So we're going to keep, when I run this, I'm going to keep a real close eye on the amp draw. But this type of prop is something I think about for like a, uh, for like a flight test plane that you might want to do more of a, th a 3D type flying with it. So let's take a look and see what happens. I'm going to keep a real close eye on that amp draw. If we get above about 20, I'm going to kill it. Here we go. I couldn't help myself. I had to punch it and see what happens. <laughs> so let's take a look and see what we got. All right, so this is a 1047 slow fly. Let me zoom out a little here, make this easier. 10 by 4.7 slow fly. And the watts peak was 297.7. The amps peak. 25.43 and the volt min was 11.68 but the thrust I didn't get the thrust let's take a look at that real quick 1352 see that's what a slow fly prop does for you 1352 right so we went up an inch and we switched paddles to a slow fly versus a sport and that's what happens. So that probably too much. I wouldn't recommend that prop for this motor. The motor's still cool, but that was a short run. The ESC is no problem. That's a 30 amp ESC, no problem. All right, let's switch this thing out and see what else I got. We'll throw something else at it. All right, this time I've got an 8.6 electric. So let's see what that does. We'll document the uh, prop size real quick over here. I'll zoom in a little bit on the screen. Make sure we get a good look at that. And I'm gonna run it up just to make sure everything's good. All right, that feels good. All right, here we go. All right, let's see what the rest of the numbers are. All right, watts peak 210, amps peak was 17.75. Let's go back to the screen. 18 amp current max. And we hit 17.75, and the wattage 302. That's probably coming from. That's actually really low for that amperage. So they're saying this thing does 302 watts. We need to do the math on that. Okay, they're saying 18 amps peak current and 302 watts peak power. When I do that math, 302 divided by 14.8, I get 20.4 amps. So what they're saying is that. A 14 cell pack at real close to their amp limit will give you 302 watts. Now the question is, what will give us 302 watts without going over that amp limit? So I'm going to go ahead and try a 7.7 prop on 4 cell. All right, it's just like everything else, right? You, you never have exactly what you want. But a 7.7 I think is going to be too much on a 4 cell. I just think that's going to be too much draw. I don't think that's going to work out. But if... I'll tell you what, when I do this other testing, if I think there's room for a 7.7, .7, I'll try it. Here's what I did find though. I found a 7.4.3 blade, which I would put on par with like an 8.4. So we do have that. I've also got an 8.4.5 and I've got a 9.4.7 slow fly. So I really want to try the 7.4.3 blade and see what happens. 
I think that on four cell might be the ticket. So let me get it propped up or set up on the, on the motor and we'll test it. You know, while I'm waiting for the four cell to charge, I thought, why not put it? It's a 743 three blade. Why not just throw that on there with the three cell and give that a run? It should be close because the 86 did 17.75 going down to a 743. That's probably going to be very close. So what the heck? Let's try it. All right, here we go. Ooh, that was terrible. <laughs> terrible. It developed like no power. Look at that, 114 watts at 9 amps. 9.55 amps. Ooh, that was awful. That's surprising to me. 114. 114.5. Against 9.55. And the min was 11.84. I didn't see the thrust. Let's take a look at the thrust. 516 peak on the thrust. Huh. That's surprising. I wouldn't have thought because look, the 8.6 drew 17 amps. So I know it's down, it's down an inch, so that's one, two, three, but it's up a blade. I just wouldn't have thought of I, I wouldn't have thought it would be that soft. That's useless. I wouldn't run that on 3-cell. Useless. Well, I mean, if you have a reason to run uh, 114 watts, maybe that's not useless for you. At least now you have the information. But one thing's for sure, the battery will last forever. This thing would fly for a long time if you need a 114-watt setup and you can tolerate that weight on the front of that plane. All right, let's get that 4-cell going. All right, I've got the four cell charged to about 4.1 volts per cell, so we're going to go with that. And I'm going to start out with a 7 by 4 by 3 first. And let's run that and see what happens. Okay, I saw 817 on the thrust, so on um, watts 210, amps 13.68, and the volts 15.19. That's still soft. We know we can go up another 5 amps and we still got 100 watts missing. So let's try, I think I have an 8.4, let's try it. Alright, this is an 8.45. So here we go. All right, I saw 1140 on thrust. I'm just going to check that one more time real quick. Watts peak, 295. That was a 295 even, it looked like. Yep, it was. And then amps peak, 19.64. And volt min was 14.9. That is the winner. Easy. So the reason I say that, let's go back to the book. Okay, let's take a look at the book again. And what they're saying is 302 watts max at 18 amps. And we scored, so they're a little ambitious, I think, but we scored 295 watts at 1.6 amps over their stated max. 845, that's your prop right there for that motor. That's what I'd run. Now, guys, i got to be honest with you. Let me point something out. This is what I love about this. When I started doing this, I was here. There's a reason I put that prop on there. I almost said that's the end of testing. 210, we got our we got our 244 watts, we got 20 amps. I said I was almost done. But see, that's what this allows us to do. 
it allows us to take and, and experiment real easy and get the data that we care about. Oh, and by the way, the thrust was good too. Not as high as the slow fly, but we know that. That's no surprise. But 1,145 grams of thrust on an 845 prop of 295 watts, man, that's the ticket right there. I might just build an airplane just to put that in it. <laughs> How cool is that? All right, that's all I got for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed the updates. Thanks for keeping me honest on the safety issue. I'm happy about the way that came out. And uh, stand by, man. I've got, <laughs> I've got more motors to go and uh, more batteries to test with. So there's more coming. Hang tight. I hope you enjoy the material. If you have, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you're told when new material hits the channel. And when I wrap this up, I will get that chart put into that nice little spreadsheet form so you guys have a nice look at it. Uh, and, and you can pause it and, and take a look at the chart on, on your own time. All right, guys, take it easy. Let's just take a look at what they see, what they say. What is it with recording videos that somebody always has to text you right in the middle of it? Okay, so they're saying, let's get this, come on, focus.